Lawrence here on a rainy Thursday afternoon. We're at Twin Peaks in Scottsdale. Coach, how you making out today? You staying dry? Well, I, you know, I I'm planning on getting a little golf in here, and uh, you know the rain and wind is, as you know, kind of snubbed that idea. So uh, I am uh, making the most of it, doing well. How are you guys doing today? Good, man. So I mean, you have all that time during the football season. So what's your handicap these days? Yeah, <laughs> it's large. <laughs> <laughs> Flying out to the holidays, large. <laughs> hey, coach. Um, when you hear uh, that Nick Saban has retired, uh, he's out now at Alabama, and we know he's arguably one of the best college football coaches of all time. Uh, had had you, did you ever have any any uh, interaction with him? I did. Um, you know, it's kind of a, just a, a really uh, interesting time right now in football in general when you see three, in my opinion, three of the greatest head coaches uh, of any generation in, in Nick Saban, Pete Carroll, and, and now Bill Belichick, uh, you know, leaving their respective posts. And, uh, you know, as far as Coach Saban goes, uh, got a chance to meet him when he uh, and spend a little time with him when he recruited Connor Brewer. When I was, uh, you know, out here at, at Chaparral High School back in the day. And then uh, I did some studying. Uh, I went to Alabama and spent some time when Jeff Banks was a special teams coordinator there when I was at Cal. And so got to, you know, spend a little time with him when I was uh, there as well. Um, you know, uh, it's uh, it's an interesting time in, in pro and college football right now, to say the least. Charlie, I'm just intrigued. You've always been out there. I remember when you guys took your staff and your chaperone. That was Michigan or Michigan State. Um, you were very proactive that way to get better from a lot of these coaches and offensive coordinators that were out there. But your interaction with 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 Nick Saban, or maybe you had some interaction with Bill Belichick, or maybe it's Pete Carroll. Um, anyone in particular is there something you took away, maybe from all three or, or one of them? I, I think that the story I could share that that that's best is. Uh, uh, when I had Craig Rowe there at, at uh, um, Chaparral, who ultimately went to Michigan, but we went to spend the day at, at USC. And um, I came away from that uh, visit just totally enthralled by, by, by Pete Carroll. And it was just it was a, um, a multi, multitude of things of how he interacted. I mean, just for instance, we're out in the middle of the scrimmage, right? They're, they're scrimmaging, SC is scrimmaging. He blows the whistle. He stops the practice. Everybody stops. And then you got on the sideline now. You got, you know, Marcus Allen, Ronnie Law, just to, just to name a few of the, the Trojan greats, right? And everybody stops. And he points to Craig. Craig, get in there. <laughs> Smile starts laughing, blows the whistle, and they go back to scrimmaging, you know. And most of the people didn't have any idea who Craig was at that particular time, right? But just how he managed the program and how he interacted with players. And then when we sat down in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with, with Fred, uh, Craig's father and myself, uh, just a dynamic personality that I walked out of there saying, uh, man, this guy gets it. He understands how to, to move the pieces and uh, um, was very, very intrigued by Pete Carroll. Charlie, my, my question is, is different from where we're at right at this moment. My question is with Saban leaving, Old-time coaches are used to being in total control, and I mean total control. You've lived it. You know what it's like. Now, with the transfer portal, with NIL, they are not in total control. In your estimation, do you think that we will see other coaches leave because of the dynamics now in college football? I think that's a great point, and uh, I think you're absolutely – Absolutely on it. Um, I think that, you know, and I, I don't know, you know, obviously the exact, I mean, I know he's getting up there in age and decides that, you know, that, Hey, it's time to retire. He's had a heck of a run. I'm talking about coach Saban, but um, you, you, you'd be a fool not to think some of this extracurriculars with, with the portal and the NIL and, and just the things that we're having to do from a recruiting standpoint in college football didn't have some sort of impact on him deciding to retire. And I think when you look at something like that, uh, as, as Jimmy would allude to, being in control. And then I think, you know, recruiting's hard. You know, Charlie. I mean, when Nick Saban, it was like two years ago, they did a 30 for 30 piece. He was saying 85 to 90 percent of his time was recruiting. I mean, I had a better appreciation for you guys with that. 
But when you look at that, it's just more than that when you have to combat what Jimmy's talking about, the dollars and cents that are beyond your control. Well, and I, I think, you know, when you look at that at Coach Saban, in, in my mind, he was such a, a trendsetter. Look, look, you know, Alabama has always been Alabama, right? It didn't stop being Alabama. You know, they won the, the national title there in the early 90s. Um, and, and then they had, a, you know, a variety of different coaches come through as, as the head man there before Coach Saban got there and kind of, um, you know, put the program back to being, you know, what we all know as Alabama. Um, but if you, you remember this, in 2007, that was, the, that was my first year at Chaparral. That was the last year that head coaches could go on the road recruiting, right? In 2008, they took the head coaches off the road and really – they attributed that and they called it the Nick Saban rule because he spent so much time going to so many schools and having such an impact on kids and so many people wanting to come out and, and get a piece of him and spend time with him that it became a, a, you know, somewhat of a distraction. Right. And he was just always at the forefront of, of the rules and uh, just out in front uh, as an organization. And I, I think, you know, uh, when we look back 20 years from now, uh, I think the, the accolades will not only be well-deserved, but I think even more uh, greatly appreciated than they are even now. Charlie, you made a great point on that. I'll take you to the movie The Blind Side, and they were all trying to recruit Michael Orr at that time. And in, in the movie, every head coach showed up to try to recruit Michael Orr to go to their school. We ended up going to Ole Miss, but still, every coach was there, and they played that out in the movie. Yeah, and you know what? That is, you know, that is the imitation of real life. And uh, I think that, you know what, uh, like I said, he, he did it uh, as good as anybody. And I think that just structurally from the organization standpoint uh, that, that he brought Alabama back, it wasn't so much necessarily. And obviously I think he's a great football coach, but I think from running a, a I think people get lost. And I think what gets lost in translation in coaching is that when you become a head coach, Three. especially – at these power five universities where there's so many different departments and so many people are working under you, you become a CEO and you better be good at managing your time and, and being structured and, and having things, you know, all your eyes dotted and T's crossed. It's, it's not so much about the football. I mean, the football is going to take care of itself. And I don't, I know you've got to have the right coaches and good coaches to get that done, but the structure in the organization to produce in the end, has to be on point or you'll never get to Saturdays and playing a high level of football. And I think that that gets so lost uh, when you talk about great football coaches. And, and I think that's one of the greatest things that Nick Saban did. Coach, what's your uh, best uh, attribute or strength on the golf course? <laughs> Putting, baby. Putting. Really? <laughs> All right. Uh, I got, listen, I got some game. I got some game in, in, in putting. I do. It's the problem is getting there. Yeah. <laughs> Two. <laughs> that that is the problem, all right? Well, Coach, uh, I know you have a little bit of time, so I'm going to shoot you a text, see if I get, we'll get out there and play, all right? I'm looking forward to it. We'll Appreciate do it. Appreciate you guys. As always, you guys are the best, man, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Go you got down. it. That's Coach Charlie Regal joining us. You can follow him on Twitter at Regal Charlie. He's presented by the Crest Insurance Group. The Crest Insurance Group offers personal, business, specialty insurance solutions for clients across all markets just go to their website at crestins.com so appreciate him jumping on uh, as he did every thursday during the football season uh, our daily digit today is three that is the number of pac-12 schools to finish ranked in the final ap top 25 poll for this past season of course the final year of the conference as we know it and those three schools washington oregon and arizona uh, along with seven others uh, will be uh, departing the conference, but nine Pac-12 teams appeared in the poll at some point or another during this past season. The Heart irony of it all, right? Heart Heartbreaking. One. It's absolutely yeah. heartbreaking. So how about this timing? Apple TV just unveiled their official trailer for the Dynasty, the New England Patriots, a 10-part documentary, and it brings together Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, and Robert Kraft. There's all kinds of con a con a contributors uh, we're going to bring that back to you. The trailer is pretty cool. And we're going to go time.